some fighters. Here comes a new challenger. Attacking and blocking are the basic building blocks for the vast majority of the games on the market today. So in this video, we'll show you how to quickly and easily create a basic attack, defense, and input system for your game. For this, we'll simply need a rig character and three animations, idle, attacking, and blocking. We'll be using our wireframe fighting game training character, which is free on the asset store, which comes with several basic attack and blocking animations. If you'd like to download this character asset pack, we've placed a link in the description below. You'll also find a link to download the finished C-Sharp script we'll create in this video. If you've created or purchased a rig character and don't have an idle attack or blocking animation, within an Adobe account, you can freely download some of the many motion capture animations they have available in their Mixamo site. So to begin, let's drag our rig character mesh into our hierarchy. With our character now in our scene, let's next create an animation controller. We can do this by right clicking in our project window, then going to create and finding animation controller. With our animation controller now created and named, let's go to our animator window by double clicking our animation controller. With our animator window now up, let's drag in our idle animation and let's next drag in our punching and blocking animation. Something to note, the first animation or animation state that's created within the animator is automatically assigned as our default animation state. Our default animation state is the first state that plays when our animation controller starts. However, if we started with the wrong animation when creating our animation controller, or we simply like to change our default state, we can do this by right clicking any of our states and selecting make layer default state. Additionally, we can also simply change our default state animation by clicking our state and dragging in or selecting a new animation under motion. Next, let's make a transition from our fighting idle to our punch state as well as to our blocking idle state. To do this, we can simply right click our state, select make transition, and then drag that transition to our finishing state. Let's now make a transition back from our punching and blocking state to our fighting idle state. For those unfamiliar with using the animation controller, by selecting our transition in the inspector, we can define the conditions that need to be met for our transition to be enabled. By default, our condition is set to has exit time. This simply means the transition will start once the animation is transitioning from is complete. If we uncheck has exit time, we can see that our transition needs at least one condition or has exit time needs to be enabled, otherwise our transition will be ignored. With that said, let's add a condition. To do this, we need to first do two things. One is create a parameter for that condition, and the next is to hit the conditions plus button within our transition. We can see if we hit the plus button before creating any conditions, we'll be given a warning that we don't currently have any parameters to create conditions of. In upcoming videos, we'll show you how to use parameters and transitions to create seamless punching and attacking combo systems. However, in this video, we'll simply create two parameters. So within our animator window, we want to find and click parameters. We want to then hit the parameters plus button and create a trigger parameter, which we'll call punching and a boolean parameter, which we'll call blocking. Let's next add our punching condition and parameter to our punching transition and our blocking parameter and condition to our blocking animation state. And we also want to add our blocking condition and parameter to our transition from our blocking state to our fighting idle state. And for this condition, we want to say if our blocking is false, then transition back to our fighting idle state. With that complete, let's now go back to our scene and test our animation controller before we continue any further. So let's select our character, and in our animator component, we'll add our animation controller we just created. And let's then hit play. By selecting our character with our animator up, we can see our state as it's playing through our animation. Something to note, if you hit play and you notice your idle animation stops once the animation sequence is complete, 
you want to then find the animation you're using and by clicking the parent game object you want to then go into animation and we want to make sure loop time is checked and then we'll click apply if we now hit play we can see that it cycles through our animations with our idle animation looping if we're in play mode with our animation window up we can test our parameters by enabling them within our animator window. If we click our punch, we can see that we can enable the trigger. Additionally, if we set our blocking boolean variable, we can see that our player is now blocking. So we can now see that our animation controller and all of our animations are working properly. Let's next create the input system to remotely control the player punching and blocking. With our animation controller now created and set up, let's begin creating the script to drive our player's attack and defense input system. Along with keyboard, mouse, and controller input, for the sake of this video, we'll also use a UI button input so that our inputs can easily be displayed in this video. So let's begin by creating a new C-sharp script, which we'll call Fighting Character Script. And let's open up our script in our script editing software. Before we begin creating our script, let's first go over the logic that we want to create. We want to use a button as well as a UI input to either set the boolean or the trigger within our character's animation controller. So to begin, we first need to create a public game object variable, which we'll call character object. Let's second create an animator variable to house our player's animator component. And we'll lastly create a public boolean variable, which we'll call is blocking. In our start method, we'll simply set our animator variable by using the component from our character object variable, as well as assuring that our is blocking boolean variable is set to false. Next, let's create two public methods, which we'll call attack one and the other set blocking. In our attack one function, we simply want to activate our character's punching animator trigger parameter. To do this, we'll type the name of our character's animator variable, followed by a period, and then set trigger. We'll then type parentheses, and in quotes, the name of our trigger inside the parentheses. Before we create our set blocking method, let's make sure everything in our code is functioning properly so far. However, since there is nothing calling our attack01 method, we'll need to create a way to call that inside the inspector. To do this, we'll use a context menu. The context menu is a fast and easy way of testing and debugging your scripts by simply calling them in the Unity Inspector. To create a context menu, we can simply type an open and close bracket above our method, and within the bracket, we'll type context menu, parentheses, and put the name that we'd like to refer to that method in quotations within the parentheses. Let's now save our script and go back in the Unity Editor and we can place our script on our character or any other game object in our scene. And we'll also need to drag our character inside of our character game object variable. And let's hit play. And if we go into our debug mode, we can see that our character controller is taken from our character. If we right click on top of our script, we can see our item from our context menu. And once we select that, we can see that our punching trigger is enabled within our character's animator. And if we like to access the methods we created using our on-screen buttons, we can simply find our UI buttons and within their button component, we can drag the game object which contains our fighting character script and then search for the script and method within our on-click event. With that complete, let's now go finish up our blocking functionality. To create our blocking functionality, we also want to use our animation controller to set our blocking boolean. To do this, we'll simply type the name of our animation controller variable, then set boolean, and within the parentheses, we'll type the name of our boolean in quotations, followed by a comma, and the value or variable that we like to set our blocking boolean to. So instead of a value, we're going to use our is blocking boolean. And we also want our method to disable or enable the blocking when our blocking button is pressed. So before we set our animation controller parameter, we want to first check and see if our is blocking is true or false.
To do this, we'll use an if statement and say if our is blocking is true, we want it to then be set to false. And if our is blocking is false, we want it then to be set to true. And after we've set our is blocking boolean variable, we'll then use its value to set our character's animation controller. Lastly, let's set up our inputs using our update method. Let's start by creating a public key code variable, which we can use to easily adjust our input key within the inspector. We'll start by using an if statement and then use the input class's get key down method. And we'll use our attack key code variable for the key we'll be getting. Alternatively, let's also allow the player to press the joysticks or the mouse fire one input button. So we'll say or input dot get button down and in parentheses in quotations, we'll say fire one. As for the name of our input button, fire one, this is simply a default name placed by Unity in the input manager for our mouse button and our controller button. And we want that to call our attack01 method. Next, let's create an input get button down and we'll use our fire2 for the name of our button. And we'll use that to call our set blocking method. Lastly, instead of using our fire2 button to enable or disable our block, let's create the functionality that makes the player have to hold down our block button and when they release it, they're no longer blocking. So we'll start by adjusting our input fire2 and we'll change that from input get button down to input get button. This will allow our input to return true as long as our fire2 button is being held down. Let's next copy these lines of code and we can paste them below the first. And for our new lines, we want to use a input get button up and then simply change our is blocking to false. And let's also take our is blocking the false and setting our animation boolean variable and paste that in our attack method. This way, even if the player is blocking and they attack, after their attack, they won't be set back in their blocking state. With that complete, let's go back into Unity, set our attack key, and then press play to test our attack and defending input system and animation. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.